uh, encourage the men uh, to consider doing a call to worship. I know many of you are willing to and um, working on putting together a little schedule. Um, those of you who know me know that organization is not my forte. And um, I'm trying. I'm trying. So somebody suggested, why don't we put together a schedule? And uh, I looked at them funny. I thought they were speaking in tongues. Um, <laughs> But they, you know, pulled out the English dictionary and showed me what that meant. Um, and so I'd like, to, I'd like to give you men an opportunity to come. But hey, here in the month of November, and I, I guess I'm just trying to take advantage of the fact that uh, um, I'm not going to be here for a few weeks if the Lord tarries. Um, Alan and I be heading over to India. Um, and, um, and so I'm thankful for Pastor Hennies and uh, Pastor Dean. By the way, pray for them. They arrive, arrive safely in Idaho, and he's candidating at a church out there. Just ask for the Lord's direction. But they will, uh, he'll be back, Lord willing. By then, they'll be preaching. So I got to take advantage of every opportunity I have to, to preach because it's in there in me. We heard a great message this week out of uh, 2 Corinthians chapter number 3 last week and talking about the divine glow, uh, the glory, the glory glory that is in us because of Jesus Christ, amen, and the Holy Spirit of God that indwells us as believers uh, there in chapter number three. But I'm going to look at chapter number four and, uh, and, and, and realize as, as we read through this uh, passage of scripture this morning that God wants us to shine as lights for him and uh, because he wants more people to be saved, amen. And, uh, and if we do, there will be that manifestation of truth. Uh, that, that is talked about in, in 2 Corinthians 4, verse number 2. It says, We've renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, and not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Look what it says there in verse 3. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Now, I would say that it is a sad thing to see a born-again Christian whose light has been quenched because they're not living the victorious Christian life. That's a, that's a sad thing. But notice what, G, what God says. The real tragedy, when that happens, when you as a born-again believer who have the potential for victory over sin, when you do not live in, in, the, in the light of that truth and it's not allowed to shine through you, the real tragedy is that the gospel is hid to them that are lost. Those around us who know not Jesus do not see him in you. That's, that's the real tragedy. That's what he's saying here. That's what's being hid. The gospel is being hid. It's being hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord. I love that. And ourselves, your servants, for Jesus' sake. I thank the Lord for people in this church who encourage me to continually lift up Jesus. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. I thank you, and I ask that you continue to do that. Don't stop. Look at Brother Brian. He's a good one. Others that do it here. Don't stop encouraging. We're not here lifting up ourselves. We're not commending ourselves. This work here today, uh, this church is not to lift up a piano player or a musician or a preacher or a teacher, or a Sunday school student or a nursery worker. The purpose of this church is to lift up Christ. Amen? And to see, so, so that Jesus may shine. And we need to preach, but we also, along with that preaching the gospel, there needs to be the shine of Jesus, the glow. Now, I say all of this, we're, we're getting to it. Verse number seven, I love this. Uh, well, let's read, I love six and seven. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ, as a direct reference to Genesis chapter number one, verse number three, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. Amen. You know, darkness was, was upon the face of the deep, and God said, let there be light. Could you imagine what that moment in, crea in the creation, in the history of, uh, uh, of the creation was like? When the glorious light from God shone, and darkness was dispelled. And God says, look, 
for God who commanded the light to shine in darkness, look what it says, hath shined in our hearts. <laughs> just, as, just as transforming as it was. And it, maybe you don't have a, 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 an imagination, and, and I feel for you if you don't. <laughs> And if you can't go back to Genesis 1-2 and imagine what it was like when the Bible says that the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And you can't imagine in your mind what it was like when God said, let there be light and boom. And if you can't imagine that, just understand this, that God says that the same transformation happened in your heart the moment the gospel of Jesus Christ penetrated. Isn't that wonderful? Think about how dramatic that must have been in the creation and think about how dramatic it must have been in your heart when the glorious light of the gospel of Jesus Christ shined there. To give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not in us. Now, here's the call to worship. I'm really not preaching. There's a call to worship. He read, you know, I got to skip a bunch of verses because I can't not comment on them. But look at what it says here in verse number 15. For all things are for your sakes. That the abundant grace, that seems to be a thing, abundant grace, that the abundant grace might, through the thanksgiving of many, redound to the glory of God, for which cause we faint not. But though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction is but for a moment, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Here's what he says. He says, abundant grace will redound through thanksgiving. Through thanksgiving. That word redound means to echo. Now, how many of you have ever stood like at a canyon and been like, hello, hello? Hello. All right, some of you are looking at me funny, like, like you've never done that. Come on now. All right, man, I've stood at the Grand Canyon, and I've been like, hello, 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 hello. I'm probably not doing a good rendition of that. That's what, that's what redound means. That's what redound means. And, and here's what he's saying. He's saying abundant grace, abundant grace will... It says there in this thing, it will, through thanksgiving, redound to the glory of God. That as we thank God for the victory, it's going to echo. It's going to echo off of Brother Brian. It's going to echo off of Pastor Henneyes. It's going to echo off of Kyle and Caleb and Michelle and Vicki. And you, you, everybody get the point? If I didn't name you, it's not because I don't like you. <laughs> hello, 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 hello. God is good, God is good, God is good, God is good, God is good. God answered prayer, God answered prayer, God answered prayer, God answered prayer. Grace just abounding. I wonder how much is grace just echoing off these walls? You know, I don't know. I, I, I plan on being here until Jesus comes in this building. I'm, there might come a time when we have to move. I know some have been talking like, Pastor, we're so full. And, and praise the Lord, I hope more people get saved. If we ever move, it's just going to be because of more people getting saved. But you know what I'm going to miss? I'm going to miss the grace of God just bouncing off these walls right here. And I just pray that, that the grace of God will always redound. Not off the walls, off of the <laughs> believers. Because the building is not the church. It's a special place. It is. This place will always, I, I will always be, I will always love this little building. But, but the redounding grace is, man, is Jesus coming? I hear the trumpet. I thought it would be louder than that, though. <laughs> I really did. Ah, we're still here, man. <laughs> oh, boy. Now I lost it. Now I lost it. <laughs> Call to worship is over. Everybody is, is not thinking about the Lord. Don't you want the grace of God to redound? I hope you do. I hope you want to be a part of it. 
You can start the echo, but you can also echo the echo. You know, and we ought to be a part of both. We ought to be starting the echo. I want to praise God because he did this for me. And when somebody does that, then you continue the echo. I want to praise God because he did this. You with me? I want to praise God. He gave me this verse this week. He dealt my heart. He showed me a new truth, whatever it might be. And next thing you know, boom, 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 boom. And that's abundant grace, redounding. And look at what it says. It says, for which cause we faint not. If this happens, people won't be discouraged to quit. We've all felt discouragement to faint, haven't we? Man, we were hoping that was the trumpet call, right? <laughs> you say, why? Because to depart and be with Christ is far better. Amen. And it is, but we skip the rest, which says to remain is more needful. You say, why? Because some, not have the, some have not the knowledge of God. That's why. You say, why do I have to keep staying here in this old body with this hurt back and these bad knees some of them had replaced this week? Why do I have to stay? I want to go be with Jesus because God doesn't want the gospel to be hid. He wants to shine because somebody needs to see it. Somebody needs to hear it. And the grace of God needs to start redounding so that we won't quit. So that we won't faint. Because our light affliction is but for a moment, amen? And it's working in us something far. I've got more to say, but the call to worship has come to a conclusion. I hope it will be a blessing to you this month of all months. Let the grace of God Echo in this place through thanksgiving by people just being grateful for what God has done. Let's take our hymnals.